What is going on YouTube? Welcome in, welcome into another video. I am LuboATM as always. Happy Wednesday and if it's Wednesday that means one thing. That means it is Shrine Day. So if you've not watched these videos before, this is a weekly video I do of the new Shrine of Secrets every week where I talk through all the perks on the Shrine and whether they're worth your hard earned shards. Uh, this week uh, is back to the, uh, <laughs> the old ways of uh, one good perk on the Shrine but we'll get into that. Um, yeah, it's not it's not particularly great this week, so we'll go through them one by one as we always do, and uh, I'll let you know if they're worth it. So let's start off at the top, which is a Freddy Teachable. It is fire up. So for each generator completed, gain a three percent stack. Well, it says three percent, but when you get up to tier three, it's four percent um, stackable buff that grants speed in picking up, dropping, vaulting, damaging generators, breaking pallets for the remainder of the trial. So that goes up to a maximum of 20%, obviously, 5 gens, 4% increase. Um, this is uh, an okay perk, I guess. Like, <laughs> like I, I think for most things that we have here, other than potentially vault and windows, brutal strength is just always better because you just constantly have the increase for the full trial. You don't have to rely on people getting generators. I mean, if you're doing, like, a Tome Challenge or something, or maybe you're playing, like, Serpent Wraith or something, you could pair it with Brutal, so you have, like, super fast breaking speeds. But it's... It is what it is. It's, it's, it's okay. It does a purpose if you are playing in a game where you, you, you kind of want to be super aggressive and you want to break things quicker, like kick generators, breakable walls, pallets, then, yeah, it could get the job done. But I just don't see any real way this would be better than brutal strength which therefore means if you want it to be super effective then you need to pair it with brutal strength but then that's two of your perk slots gone do you know what i mean like i i, I just can't see where this this perk kind of just as as the better option if you know what i mean so i i wouldn't wouldn't really recommend this one um the next perk um, as we were, I was talking about earlier on, it's a, it's a one perk shrine this week, pretty much. Um, is the Jake Teachable of Iron Will. Uh, so you're able to concentrate and enter a meditative like state to numb pain, grunts of pain caused by injuries are reduced by X percent. So up at tier three, that's a hundred percent. So basically, if you've got tier three Iron Will, you make no noise while injured. Um, just a really good perk. You can you can pair it with a lot of different things. Um, like your lucky breaks for example your off the records all that sort of stuff it comes in really handy as well as if you're a flashlight gamer that means if you're injured you can still be kind of in the nearby vicinity if you're going to go for flashlight saves um just in general like if you're if you're playing against a killer who potentially gets lost easily um and is kind of seeking you out and they're not tracking you through your blood or whatever then the the ability to make no noise is, is incredibly useful. Um, I don't think it's as OP and, and as good as everyone kind of makes it out to be. Um, that's just my opinion. I, I think it's a very good perk. I don't think it's like S tier by any stretch of the imagination. It does a job. Um, and I think if you're running it in specific builds, it can be incredibly helpful. But I don't think it's like the be all and end all, if that makes sense. But it does have multiple different uses, as I said, that you get the flashlight save aspect. Uh, can help you lose killers you can pair it with like other perks and just virtually disappear um i've seen people pair it with like life and quick and quiet so if they take a hat vault a window and then they're, they're gone basically you're, you're you're out of there uh you can pair it with lucky break as well so if you take a hat in in a, a kind of busy map you can you can basically just disappear so definitely a very good perk and probably the best perk on the shrine this week um, the next one, the first killer one on the shrine, is a Trapper Teachable, which is Unnerving Presence. So your presence alone instills great fear. Survivors within your terror radius have a 10% greater chance of triggering skill checks, which is a fixed amount um, for uh, repairing or healing. And triggering of skill check success zones are reduced by, it says 40 here, but up at tier 3, that's 60%. So basically you have a lot smaller... Um, obviously success zone um like if you're within the terror radius which i think this is a really good perk if you're a newer player so if you're playing at low ranks like like potentially yellow ranks and, and even potentially like kind of lower green ranks um i think that this is a really good perk um because people who you're playing against will also be newer to the game um maybe not particularly 
not particularly good at hitting skill checks, so you can maybe take advantage of that for some extra kind of tracking or, or whatever. Um, once you get to kind of lower ranks, though, your your kind of purples and your reds, it basically loses all all effectiveness. My, my, my view is that people at that rank are used to hitting skill checks for, like, decisive strike, brand new parts, uh, all things like that. So a 60% reduced skill check zone for, for good survivors it isn't really something that they'll struggle with. Maybe they, they might miss the first one until they realise you run it, and then they'll know to be on guard to look out for it as well. So... Um, and obviously the, the decisive strike and the um, brand new part skill check success zones are, are, are far smaller than the unnervous presence one. So I think this is again is a really good perk for you if you're if you're just starting out in the game, um, maybe up to maybe rank ten, so like twenty to ten, um, you can get some really good value out of it. Anything above that, you're you're kind of you're probably not going to see a lot of benefit from from unnerving presence, which is a shame. Um, again, it's it's kind of bad. You see this quite a lot with like different perks like this, um, predator things like that. That, that. Perks that are really good for you when you first start to help you kind of get to grips with the game. But then after a certain level, there's really no point in ever using them, which just kind of makes it a bit more frustrating. Um, like as you unlock teachables, because you'll end up getting this in the blood web, and you're like, I'm never going to run this. Basically, I've also realised that I've just said this is the first perk. Clearly, the first or the first killer perk. The, clearly, the first killer perk was the Freddy Teachable. Um, I'm just it, it's very early in the morning, guys. So b bear with me. Um, and the final perk on the shrine this week is Wake Up. So the orders of the exit gates um, switches are revealed to you within 128 meters. That's the fixed amount. Uh, when open an exit gate, your aura is revealed to all other survivors within 128 meters which is, again, a, a fixed amount and also quite good. And you open the exit gates, it says here 5%, but tier 3, that's 15% faster. So again, I think this falls under the same category as unnerving presence. I think this is very good when you're just starting out with the game. So if you're just getting kind of used to it um, and you, you, you're not particularly good at finding exit gates or you miss the, the pop-up when the last gen goes, it's good to help you find exit gates efficiently it's also good for your teammates because your team 120 meters basically covers the full map so all of your teammates will see that you're on a gate so like if they're looping a killer they'll know that you're working on the exit gate sort of thing um and opening the exit gate 15 percent faster is fine as well you know what i mean like it, it, it's it's quicker it's good it counters some other killer perks um, the slowdown, obviously, Freddy has the, the kind of flip side of this, which is the Remember Me, which stacks up the, the time to, to slow the opening of the exit gates. Uh, I, but again, I, I, I think if you're running, if you're playing Survivor, this is obviously very end game dependent. And I think when you're playing a Survivor, your priority should be getting through the trial and getting to the end game, not having a perk that is relying on you reaching the end game. Because like this will be taken away from like my standard bill on any survivor, um, it's always adrenaline with bond, uh, and then the other two are negligible. It's usually BT improve thyself just because I like blood points and, and quicker gen speeds. So like if I was to run this, I would need to lose one of those perks, so it would be prove thyself because it's probably the most one I would I would like. It's probably just a, a choice one. Um, because I wouldn't take borrowed time off because I don't want to leave people in a bad position when they're unhooked. I, I like having bonds so I can see what my teammates are doing and I know if they're if they're within bond range and they're being chased by a killer if a killer leaves them and comes towards me if I'm working on a gen for instance um, I know that if they're nearby and I've got a flashlight I know like I can see them looping and where they are looping that sort of stuff and adrenaline again as much as I'm saying that that's a reliant on getting to the end game um, the difference between wake up and adrenaline is that adrenaline can come in so clutch for example if you're working on a generator and you're injured as soon as you pop that last generator, you're back to full health and as you gained an extra health state and then able to kind of take hits for your team. Um, or if you're in chase, like obviously it prolongs that chase like because you get the extra health state back, all that sort of stuff. Like it comes in really clutch. I would rather have that that gives me an extra health state and a slight speed boost uh, than I would have something showing me where the exit gates are because even if you've missed the, 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 the kind of where the exit gates are in the pop-up, you can find them fairly fairly easily basically just run around the outsides of the map and most maps have kind of relatively static 
gate spawns so like if you've been on the map plenty of times before you kind of know where the exit gates are going to go um or at least you know the kind of three or four spots so you kind of just go around them um i just don't see i would rather have proved thyself in that instance than i would have wake up is all i'm saying um if you're running like heavily meta and you've got like dead hard ds unbreakable and borrowed time which one of them are you going to sacrifice in game to bring in wake up probably none of them that's that's the kind of point i'm trying to make anyway um but that's us guys that's another shrine in the books another one done ticked off and hopefully these seven days pass quickly because as i said there's not that much great stuff on it i kind of covered it in the descriptions if you're going to get anything this week get iron will it's the best perk by a considerable margin on this shrine uh, this week the other three are all fairly rough and bad so um you can get you can definitely get better value um either holding your your uh, shards the next week or if you're going to go completionist and you're not going to level up freddy or trapper or quentin then go for that in that case but I, I i wouldn't recommend it iron will is the way to go here um but anyway guys thank you so much thank you so much for popping in thank you for joining me and listening to me uh rant about how much i dislike these perks um as always i've been libo atm please like the video and uh, subscribe to the channel it really helps me out being a newer content i've got to stop saying that i'm not really a newer content creator anymore i've been doing this a few months but i'm going to keep saying it it's catchy um and as always come check me out over on twitch i stream a couple times a week at dead by daylight uh, it's twitch.tv forward slash libo atm as it's a wednesday i will be streaming today day of release um so come check me out i'd love to speak to each and every one of you and we can have a further rant about how bad these perks are but until next time, guys, peace.